Hey guys, I'm Craig Slate. And I'm Ed Todd, And you're listening to The Fresh Crab. Um, I think he was only there long enough to be born, and then from that point forward, he was in Arizona. But uh, he's a young man that spent quite a many years in Arizona. Uh, he literally, I think, stumbled, and I mean that seriously, into the produce business. Uh, and, uh, you know, I good news is, is you know, he's, uh, he's kind of my partner in crime in this whole deal. And that is our good friend. Mr. Matt Mandel, welcome to the Fresh Crit. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Long time listener, first time caller. I had to throw it in there. Yeah. Um, and and just, to, just to go back on your, your comments about being in Michigan long enough to have been born there, <laughs> um, literally one week after I was born, a tornado came through and destroyed the hospital I was born in. <laughs> wow. So I'm not sure if that was the <laughs> impetus to you know, finally be, be pushed out of Michigan, but it was not long after that. And, um, having been in Arizona for roughly 40 years, just kind of round the edges on that one. Um, I, I consider myself an Arizonan, even though I will still claim to have been born in the state of Michigan, because that's what's on my birth certificate. I, I don't remember it, but they tell me that's what happened. What's your excuse for being a Detroit Lions fan? I mean, <laughs> that's a, this is our year. Just, just, like, just like the Cowboys fans out there, this is our year. Uh, you know what? Some of us that are Cowboys. Yeah, see, in the Cowboy fan world, we just quit being fans <laughs> until they get better. You know, everybody thinks, you know, we're, we're, we're not loyalists. We're, we're but, either you're winning or we're not your But fan. every year's your year. <sighs> yeah, we've kind of, some of us have even quit saying that, I think. No, so. I, I have yet to hear you stop saying that. So when it happens, I'll believe you. Well, let's don't go football because, yeah, that kind of brings me down. Oh. For sure, for All right. sure. All right. We're going we're gonna to talk some fun talk, stuff. Talk that, some that, positive. That bring up some energy. You know world. what? Matt is the first guy to bring some fine beverages, right? You know, we've had these snacks here for the guests, and Matt, Matt rolls up and thought, you know what? I'm going to dial it up a notch. Brought Eddie mm. a, a nice little uh, coffee. Little. Brought me a beautiful little stout, and uh, I don't know, what are you drinking there? I am drinking a Stone Sour. Stone Sour. IPA? Uh, no, it's a sour. It's sour ale. Ah. It's, it's a, it's IPAs kind of taste sour, don't they? No. They're they taste sour. hoppy. Hoppy? Hoppy. Hoppy. Anyway. I just know dark. I like motor oil. Anyway, thank you, Matt, for, for, for the beverages. It's been great. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, I, I, I do appreciate the opportunity, like I said, having watched slash listened to the podcast for a very long time this is uh this is quite an interesting opportunity for me to be on this side of the camera <laughs> i do tend to say i have a, a face made for radio so i hope people are listening to this and not watching <laughs> at least this segment yeah you don't have to worry about anybody watching this trust me this <laughs> is just all we we keep calling it a passion project because uh, that's the only way we can rationalize why we keep doing it the so. five people that listen <laughs> regularly are super passionate the most important people yeah it's not my family that's watching it. Okay. I've been told that, uh, in fact, my brother, when I mentioned this, I said, hey, I got this live thing going on. And I told him it was like 10 to 5 o'clock or something. He's like, oh, my God, you're going to be talking for like eight <laughs> hours? I'm supposed to watch that. Has he met you before <laughs> talking for eight hours? Well, he knows <laughs> I can. It doesn't mean he's going to tune that's in to watch That's not the hard part. Yeah, he's like, I'm not watching that. It's in a single breath. Yeah, so I'll let Ed talk every now and then. Yeah. Once in a while. You know. Yeah, thanks. I've been known to uh, chat it up a little bit myself. <laughs> From time to time. So you should tell him, though, I mean, just put some headphones on and go about his business, and you can just listen in the whole time. Oh, my brother? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do. He's a little old school. Yeah? Not sure he's got head. Well, he has headphones, but they plug into, like, a receiver. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he still has a tape to tape program working, you know, the real to real, real to real. Yeah, real to real. Well, that's so. making a comeback, you know. Hi fi's and the, the audio turntables. I just got a turntable. Oh no, I did. What I really didn't. Expect, I didn't really expect this to go that direction. <laughs> well, you, you can you, play all your old Frankie Valley records. <laughs> so, uh, I, I well, I got a turntable, and I am super fired up. Got a, so, and, and it's it bangs. 
Not sure my new neighbors are going to be super excited about my whole sound system. Because your other Welcome music to was... the neighborhood. <laughs> your, other, your other means of playing music was too high quality, and that's why you had to go to... <laughs> just bring it down a notch. <laughs> you need to bring it down a notch. There's something... Try to keep it real. What is, what's the word? Ethereal? Is it ethereal? It's something about the album, the, the scratchy, the... Uh, the ephemeral? Ephemeral. That's... What's ethereal? It just means, like, I believe it exists in space. In space. Like, ephemeral is the word I was looking for. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, Tanya, hopefully she's not listening to this part. Cause <laughs> she's not. I'm I, using, <laughs> she's, <laughs> don't worry. <sighs> well, if she does, she will point out that, once again, I should not use any words that I don't know what I'm using. <laughs> so, Mon go monosyllabic. <laughs> quit, quit using singular words. You took words. a swing. I did, so... You tried. Anyway, uh, Matt, so, so look, this show is about trying to get better and all the struggles people have had in their lives and how they got better. Do you have any struggles in your life? <laughs> yeah, I, I live on Easy Street. It's literally uh, my address, 123 Easy Street. Uh, that's what I thought. Um, so but it may not be a great interview because you're just going to be Easy Street. Yeah, uh, but, you know, uh, it's... I, I think anybody that is in this business understands that Easy Street is... <laughs> Uh, a hard place to get to. Uh, I haven't found it yet. I've seen, I've seen it on several other people's faces. Allegedly, uh, they they would happily tell me otherwise. And you know, we all have, we all have our struggles, both uh, personally and professionally. But uh, in this business specifically, um, yeah, I think it seems to have been getting more complex. Not necessarily more difficult, but definitely more complex over the years. And. Um, it, I don't want to say it couldn't happen to a better group of people, but uh, our industry is historically known for uh, being able to overcome adversity and you know just the nature of the beast and dealing with Mother Nature, the, the least controllable of all variables. Um, you know, I think that's a, a, a good place to start when it comes to being able to, to overcome difficulties because the, the people that are in this industry are you know very resilient. Um, so. Yeah, I, I think that tends to lend itself to, you know, some very strong-willed, strong personalities and, and some very, um, I don't want to say people that like adversity, but they don't, uh, they don't hesitate they don't back when, down when, 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 when it's staring them down in the face. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah a adversity, I think, just is, is a part of the, the game in our industry, and I think that... Um, that's really what helps to bring out some of the the best personalities. Yeah, I, in in my experience, the best personalities in the world have uh, have been in this industry. Mm -hmm. um, and just listening to people and their stories is uh, it really doesn't it never gets old. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, and you, you of course, and you came into this business at a very young age. Given the fact that uh, zero years old, zero years old, right? You know, so so we had Tomas on earlier today, and uh, he started at what was he four months? No, four years old. Was Something he like four? Well, okay, he wasn't four months. You're talking about when he was sitting on the plow. Sitting on the plow. Yeah. Are you no. sure he wasn't four months? I don't he, think he was four months. I would, I, was, I would <laughs> hope he's in a plow. baby carrier if yeah. he's at. Well, I asked him if he had a baby carrier. He said no, oh, but he, he, he said car seat. He he's, asked him if he had a car seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems like a logical thing to put on the back of the plow. I doubt there were cars. They didn't back exist. Then. Yeah. Back then, woo, you just aged Tomas. No, I'm the same age. I, just, <laughs> I don't remember, but I'm sure there wasn't. So you didn't sit on a plow, though. I did not. No. So it's, a little bit about where, how you got into this wonderful world approach, because it wasn't exactly a direct path. It wasn't like, it was, hey, I'm going to go off to school and become a produce man or slight, anything like that. Slightly circuitous, but I, I, I made my way back home, as they say. Uh, Actually, I'm, you know, while Sunfed is, is where I'm at now, it really is a, a multi-generational path to get me where I am today. My father's father uh, used to work in New York City way back in the day in Terminal Market, and then he made the transition from just working in the Terminal Market to actually representing growers, and he worked his way up and down the East Coast, and ended up down in Pompano, Florida, and my dad, uh, somewhat similar to myself, was born into it and said, yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to do this for a living, and ran off, had another career, and one day he called up his dad and said, hey, uh, you think you could show me that, that produce industry thing that you do? 
You know, I don't know if he came back with his tail between his legs or if he was actually excited about it, but um, he spent one summer on the, uh, the Pompano Market with his dad. And um, I don't know if it stoked a fire that was already inside him or if he just said, well, I got to stick it out because I need to make some money. Um, he, he stuck with it. And this was late 70s, I believe it was 77 or 78. Um, and then over the next few years, he went from somebody that didn't really know much about the produce industry at all to, uh, you know, traveling seasonally, following the crops and, you know, learning the business from the growers and uh, ended up representing several of them, Florida, Georgia, Texas Melon deal came down to Nogales, which back in the day, you know, the Nogales deal was a three month deal. Um, so he worked that a few years, moved on to California, and you know, he was following the crops, as they say. Um, and I was born in uh, the early 80s, 1980. Um, and at that, at that point in time, he was still traveling for work and he had not uh, established any businesses of his own but it was shortly after that um, set up his own gig and so you know there were several times when I was a very young child running around a produce warehouse and you know dodging forklifts and you know that's a oh, great uh, game <laughs> yeah <laughs> OSHA really wasn't a thing yeah. back then um, and uh, I may have gotten in trouble uh, you know jumping on a pallet jack and driving it through the uh, the door of a cold room once so uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed on pallet jacks anymore because of that. It happened many, many years ago. Maybe that's a good thing, maybe not. Uh, and so, yeah, I, you know, to say that I was born into it or grew up around it uh, is not an exaggeration. You know, days after school, you know, we, don't have, we don't have daycare. We have produce daycare where you get to come. And you know, my first job was repacking hot peppers. Oh, boy. You know, we had 40... 40 pound wire bound crate, literally wooden wooden slats, wire bound crates, and empty out and repack them and sort them and into RPCs. Uh, yeah, I don't think RPCs were, had had picked up just yet back then, but uh, it was right around the corner. Yeah, I think it was um, a, but uh, enough you know, to eat them all. <laughs> you, the yellow pepper. You you learn a couple you know lessons. Number one, you learn the value of hard work. Okay, and that's that's something again. Everybody in this business, you either work hard or, or you don't belong in this business. Uh, you learn the value of washing your hands after handling hot peppers. <laughs> um, and that's, that's a lesson you really only have to learn once. One time, right? One that's time. A, that's a quick one. Um, so yeah, you know, no rubbing your eyes, no using the restroom. It's you work until you're done and then you immediately go wash your hands twice. Um, but yeah, that, that really was my, my introduction to this world and, uh, growing up eating a lot of really fresh fruits and vegetables literally you know hours outside out of the field um and at some point in time i said you know what maybe this isn't for me and i, I think realistically after you stuck your hands in your face with <laughs> yeah exactly pepper. after i learned that lesson i'm like i'm out <laughs> I'm not, yeah. um no nah, then, then he pranked someone <laughs> i'm sure a couple, a couple handshakes there, there were some pranks i it, there were um i i may have gotten in very very brief story. There was a uh, a foreman in the warehouse that uh, that we were working at, um, who he and I we just kind of kind of butt heads. Granted, I was you know like 13, 14 year old kid that um, probably thought a little more highly of myself than than was necessary, um, and you know we we got into it one day and I took uh, I took a tomatillo pepper and I wrote on the on the wall I wrote his name and then sucks, <laughs> right. Um, Little did I think that a few days later it would, you know, actually begin to grow mold, and it oh my started gosh. to pop out on the wall. Uh, you know, the the tomatillo juice was relatively clear, so you couldn't see it when I wrote it. But uh, when it started to rot and mold, then you know it came out. And not only did it come out, but it stayed Stay. after it, it stayed. after it got washed. Um, I have not been back to that warehouse, but I would not be surprised if it still says that on, uh, on the wall somewhere. Um, so, yeah, the, there, were, there were pranks and there were uh, questionable decisions, but I think that's what youth is for. Um, and, and, you know, at some point in time I said, this, this probably isn't for me. Yeah. And which probably was one of the better decisions for me. 
um, you know, nothing against the people that are born into this business and just run with it. Uh, I needed to see that there were uh, things outside of this business and people outside of this business that, you know, really, I think at some point in time made me appreciate uh, the business a lot more than I otherwise would have. Um, and, you know, when you're, when you're inside something for so long, um, you start to lose perspective, mm -hmm. right? This is like, this is all I know. And then when you start to go out and see other industries, other people, and the way other people work, then that's, that's when you really um, can understand and appreciate where you came from. And uh, ultimately, I, I ended up coming back and, you know, going on nearly two decades back in the, uh, in the industry now, so. So now you went to school at NAU. Yes. And then so I got I got my uh, my undergraduate degree in computer information systems at uh, from Northern Arizona University. So you're gonna be a code writer? So I, I did write some code. Uh, what I, language? I, I wrote what language. You guys write in your Well, so so, so yeah, back then it, we were uh, using COBOL. Um, okay, but that's why I said I don't know if you were. It was old not. school. Yeah, COBOL, um, and Fortran's what I learned to program. And it, it was right around the time when all the new languages were starting to pop up, but um, I guess I was a couple years too early for um, really being thrust into all the new languages. And uh, because I'm of that- I'm kind of surprised you didn't stay in Flagstaff. That's one of my favorite places. So, so I wanted to, I tried to, and there's just no jobs up there. There weren't at the time, you know, it's, it's grown quite a bit uh, since, since back then, but it was, it was beautiful. <clears throat> I enjoy the outdoors and the hiking and uh, snowboarding and, yeah, there, there's quite a bit to do uh, outside of being employed. Uh, so in, in employment is, or was, it may be different now, uh, hard to come by. So I decided I was going to leave and, and ended up coming back to Tucson. And, you know, I got a few computer jobs and within, within six months of graduating and actually working in the, uh, the computer world, I said, wait a second, this is, <laughs> this, this probably isn't for me. I'm, <laughs> Yeah, I, I tend to be a, a bit of an extroverted introvert, but even that was a, was a little too isolated for me. And uh, when when you find yourself talking to yourself um, and you're responding to yourself, it's like mm, maybe I should get out more. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I I ended up going into the the restaurant business for whew, six or seven years. Um, enjoyed my time there, but uh, yeah, I really. I think what I enjoyed most about it is that was, I was forced to talk to people. And as, as I mentioned, you know, I am somewhat of an introvert, but it taught me how to turn it on when I need to, mm -hmm. and I can turn it off when, when I'm done, <laughs> uh, which is a, a very valuable skill for somebody that, you know, would not otherwise be a very talkative individual. So, um, and then, you know, one day my dad came, he's like, hey, um, you know, there's, I've had a few partners over the years and none of them have quite worked out for me and I need somebody who has good critical thinking skills and I said, you know, if I, if I find him, I'll let you know, but, uh, uh, you know, he, he'd made several runs at me to come back into the business over the years and I just kept saying no, 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 and I don't know what it was about that day. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed or... Touch at a weak moment. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was the right side of the bed, I'm not sure. I, I eventually said yes to him and, like I said, that was... 17 years ago and and here you are now and here i am wow I'm, never did i think that uh talking to my dad i'd end up on a podcast well and you know so and and i know we're getting i'm getting uh, the high sign from the old producer over there but i can't not bring up the facts so all this podcast really if you look back at the whole podcasting um lineage if you will for for craig it really originated with this guy it's all my fault. It's I, all his fault. I apologize, fault. Yeah. folks. So he's the guy that says, hey, you really... So I can't even remember exactly how, how the conversation... I think I'd mentioned making these... I came out to, to SunFed and to Tucson, and I was talking about this life-changing, and I'd probably read a book or something. He's like, look, have you listened to this guy called Tim Ferriss? And I was like, I hadn't, but I'll check it out. And, man, I started listening to him, and I just kind of like fell in love with his podcast and then through Tim Ferriss I found Peter Atia and then Matt and I both began to share all kinds of podcasts and this and all this stuff and so anyway 
He's the reason I even got into podcast in the interest in the first place. Your fault. Sorry. It's all, all his fault. It's just he didn't exist. So anybody that's out there listening, says, why in the hell is Craig doing this? It's this guy. That's, this is why I'm doing this. We'll, uh, we'll post my address in the show notes if you want to send me gifts. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been fun, Matt, for sure. And, uh, and like I say, it's, you know, I'd let off, you know, Matt and I, through, through my, my journey as well, getting to SunFed, you know, we wound up actually partnering in business and partnered in now a couple of different things that, that are related to and in and, and business and it's been been great to work with definitely uh two different personalities <laughs> uh, i'm i'm just a complete introvert uh, yeah, most somebody knows. <laughs> so you know I'm, I'm stuck in that matt helps bring me out of my shell every now and then and, uh, but no it's been great fun um absolutely eddie I, you know it's i just feel like we're running out of time we'll have to do a part two but we this did. One, but this is going to be a remote as well. Like, we're going to do something remote. Well, somewhere. Come to the SunFed uh, studio. Yeah, you got to come hang out with us. We'll, okay. we'll live stream from the SunFed conference room. That sounds like a practical joke you guys are going to play on me. But okay. We're not do that, <laughs> I, Okay. It's not, I'm, uh, not I'm out of the realm recently. of possibility. I'm not repacking peppers without washing my hands. <laughs> well, yeah. good. Well, I, I, like I, how you say, I like how you say without washing your hands, which means you're leaving the door open to actually repack and pop peppers. <laughs>